Hey, Blue Collar Millionaires, I'm back. I got Demi Smith from Height Digital. Height Digital is a friend and a partner of ours. They come on. JC usually comes on. Demi's on today. And they always give us really strategic, easy to use things you can do to get leads, build your online presence every every Thursday at 12 o'clock. Demi, thanks for coming on. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, Kevin, just as you mentioned, I know that JC typically does our live trainings, but I'm filling in this week because he's traveling. So happy to be here. I know I've met a lot of the members of the group today. What I have put together for everyone is just going over the basic functionality of Google PPC, why it's important, how we can get those things set up and what to look for. So as long as you guys are good to go, I'm happy to share my screen and kind of get into that presentation. If you have any questions, you can stop me at any time. Or let's do it. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Not, yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So just as Kevin had mentioned, uh, my name's Demi. I'm the director of client success here at Height. So I work with our sales, onboarding, help with client retention. So I have my hands in a lot of different areas here. But one of the things that we focus on at Height is, of course, ongoing lead generation. So whether that's search engine optimization, if it's a PPC campaign, if it's a Facebook ads campaign, um, we handle everything from there. So today we'll go over some of the basics with Google PPC. So first things first, what is Google PPC? If you are in the home service space, I'm sure that you're very familiar, you've heard of it before, or maybe you've ran your own ad campaigns, but essentially... Google pay-per-click is an online advertising model, which allows you to display your business at the top of Google, and it allows users to click on your ads, see your business more frequently, and it will charge you a fee each time your ad is clicked on. So this is a very targeted, it can be a very cost-effective approach for business owners to be able to promote specific products or services or target specific locations. So as we can see here in the image, We'll have, every time we go to a Google search, depending on your location, we'll have organic results. But anytime that we're seeing a sponsored post, this is the Google AdWords side. This is the pay-per-click model. So why is Google PPC so important? The biggest thing is Google PPC allows for your business to not get lost in the different results of the search engine results page. So being in home service, again, with depending on how long you've been in business, we could have an organic presence, we could be seen in the map pack, we could have a good SEO ranking, but if we haven't had that set up, PPC allows us to put our business at the very top of Google as quickly as possible. So this is all about visibility, making sure that we're being seen by your target demographic, your target location, and your target audience. There's a few different types of Google ads. What I like to focus on primarily, especially in home service, is the Google AdWords campaign, which we'll be talking about today. And there's also Google local service ads. So just a brief here, Google local service ads is a little bit different. So if you have heard of Google Guaranteed, this is actually a pay per lead model that Google offers. You do have to submit a few things for your business, like your licensing, your insurance, but the benefit to the Google Guaranteed is there's not a ton of management that goes on with these campaigns. So just a little brief here, if you aren't running Google Guaranteed for your business, this could be a really quick and easy thing that you could get set up and you could start trying out for some more lead flow. Um, again, the difference here is since it is a pay per lead, you are only paying anytime someone actually sends you a message or gives you a phone call directly, which is a little bit different than the AdWords campaign where we're paying anytime someone clicks on that ad, regardless if they convert or not. There's a couple other campaigns, Performance Max campaign, Google Shopping Network. Again, I don't think those are entirely applicable to home service. Performance Max campaigns just tend to be a little bit more of a display feature. So banner ads, YouTube ads, things like that. If you have any videos or any photos showcasing what you do, this could be great for brand recognition, but not necessarily lead generation. So how this works, am I going too fast? Are we all good? <laughs> no, it's good. Okay, perfect. So into the functionality, how PPC works. 
there is going to be a few different factors. So the first factor is Google PPC is just fully an auction. It's making sure that we're putting a correct bidding number for specific keywords that we would like to rank for. It's making sure that we set a daily budget that's going to be competitive for you, your service, and your market. So what this is going to do is anytime someone searches for a service that you may offer, for the sake of this presentation, I'm gonna focus on roofing. So if someone was to search like residential roof replacement near me, we need to let Google know that that is a keyword that is relevant to our business and that we would like to rank for. So how we do that is we'll actually set a specific budget daily to let Google know that we have X amount of dollars to bid towards that keyword. Now, there's also going to be some other factors with like the quality score of the actual ad copy, which we'll get into here in a second, but making sure that your ads are written very well, we're using the correct keywords, and we have enough money allocated each day to actually be competitive to bid on those keywords. The second factor is going to be selecting the correct keywords. So we, again, we wanna make sure that these are actually relevant to your product or the service you offer. There's short form keywords, there's longer tailed keywords. So we could be targeting residential roof repair, residential roof replacement. We could also be targeting residential roof repair, St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas. So we can make those a bit more specific as well. Now, a keyword is what's gonna tell Google when to trigger that ad. So if we're bidding on specific keywords, anytime we have a user that goes in to search for those keywords, that's going to tell Google where to place your ad and where it's going to be the most relevant. And then as I had just mentioned, there's a few different factors that go into the bidding strategy. Essentially, we are looking at advertisers who are setting the maximum bid amount. So making sure that we understand certain factors like the cost per click, understanding the competition, which I'll get into here in just a second. So understanding those metrics and how we select the specific keywords. This is just a grand um, snapshot of all across the United States. So this could be very different, but since we're focusing on roofing, this is going to be the most important thing to understand when setting up that ad campaign. So there is a really, really great free tool that Google gives us. It's called the Keyword Planner. Anyone can go in there. This is where I pulled this data from. So it's the Google Keyword Planner if you wanna look at the competition and the keywords in your market. But what I did here was I took a look at some roofing related keywords across the United States. And there's a few different metrics that we look at. So the first thing is going to be what keywords are ranking, what keywords are relevant. The second is going to be average monthly search volume. If you live in a large metro like Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, the average monthly search volume is likely going to be pretty high. Now, I know that we have some contractors in here as well that live a little bit further out or maybe in more rural areas. You wanna make sure that you're looking at the average monthly search volume because if we have say zero to 100 searches each month for a specific keyword, we may wanna actually broaden the radius that we're running those ads in so that we can target more people. Now, competition is going to tell us how many other people are in there bidding on these keywords? Is it lower competition? Are there many other companies that are running for ads like this in your market? Is it higher competition? Again, as we get into more saturated markets, there may be more businesses that are actually running more campaigns. And then the third factor is going to be the top of the page bid. So the top of the page bid is gonna be two different things. There's gonna be a low range and a high range. We typically determine the average cost per click by averaging out these numbers to see what can be effective as an ad spend. To put this in perspective, the least competitive day is going to be your low range. So maybe just a normal day of the week, you may be paying $11, $12 for a click for roofers near me. Now, if we have a hurricane or if there's a storm that comes through and we have a lot of hail damage, there's gonna be more companies in there bidding on those keywords, which could make it seem like we could get the average cost per click up to $56. So there's a lot of different factors that we wanna look into. For this specific example, the average cost per click is about $32. It is very competitive in roofing, but the budget recommendation here, if we're looking at an average of like 10 clicks per day, 30 days out of the month, that brings the budget recommendation to about $7,000 a month. Um, any thoughts or questions there before I carry on? No, I understand. 
Well, I got a, I got a question. I might have missed it. Um, how did you figure the average 10 clicks per day? So whenever we're looking at the like the Google PPC conversion rate, typically you're looking at about 5% conversion. So for most businesses, we want to make sure that we're allowing anywhere from 7 to 10 clicks per day, which is just a general rule of thumb, so that we can get an accurate conversion. So I went on the high end. I did the 10 clicks per day. Some people will go a little bit lower. Again, it just depends on your market and how many leads you're looking to get. But we would do the 10 times the average cost per click and then however many days out of the month you would like to run that ad. So, for example, if we want to take the weekends off and we want to pause that ad campaign, we may only be running the ads, you know, for 24 days out of the month and so on. Perfect. Okay, so ad components and structures. This is another thing that's going to be super important. If you are going to set up a PPC campaign, yes, we want to have a good idea of what it's going to cost and what's going to be effective, but we also want to know how to segment those ad groups. So Google gives us the opportunity to have different ad groups based on the related keywords, based on the theme or the products or the services. So what we want to do is, for example, if we have residential roofing and commercial roofing, we want to keep those in two different segments. If we try to group those together, essentially what we're doing is we're telling Google to look two ways at the same time. So we want to make sure those are separate so that there's no confusion with the leads that we're trying to get. Now, with ad copy, there's a few different things we want to look at here as well. We want to make sure that we have a catchy and relevant headline. If you have a promotion, if you have a specific offer, this could be something that could catch someone's attention. Description needs to be sure that we're including business information, relevant keywords, keywords determining the services that you're offering, and then the URL. So URL is going to go back to having a good quality website, but we do want to make sure that each ad segment, again, if it's commercial roofing, residential roofing, if it's repair versus replacement, each ad needs to be directed to that landing page on your website so that there's no confusion and there's a higher chance for converting. There's a really good graphic that I found that shows you how this gets broken down. So for example, once you create a Google Ads account, you can start setting up these campaigns. So let's say again, we have a residential roofing campaign and we have a commercial roofing campaign. You can have different ad groups with say, different promotions, different verbiage. We can target different keywords and then that's going to direct everything to a specific landing page on your website. So this is the biggest thing and the most common thing that I see whenever I'm auditing PPC accounts is we have everything thrown into one. We don't segment different campaigns. And unfortunately what that does is it eliminates a lot of the qualified leads that we can get and it also wastes our ad budget. So we wanna make sure we're as specific and straight to the point as possible. So that's something to factor in as well. And then the last thing I had, I don't wanna to get too overwhelming, but if you guys have any questions or any thoughts on how to create a PPC campaign or how to get this set up, the first thing, of course, we want to do is make sure that you have a Google Ads account, go in and create a Google Analytics, and then you can start selecting things like your campaign goals. Google will walk you through all of this as well, but you can talk about if you guys want more branding, if you want more website traffic, if you actually want more leads, it'll walk you through how to set up different campaign types. And then we'll go back to what we talked about at the beginning, determining your daily budget, using the keyword planner so that you can make sure you stay competitive. But that Thanks, is what I, Karen. you're welcome. I hope that wasn't too much. I know I can talk a lot, but if there's any questions or if anyone wants me to audit their PPC account or look into anything, you guys can reach me on here on Facebook. You can send me an email, send me a text message, and I'm happy to do so. How, how would the audit work if you did that? So what we would need for the audit is I would need access to the Google Ads account. So typically you can just either add my email or you can give me your CID number, which is the nine digit number at the top of your Google account. And then I can go in there as a viewer, take a look at the campaigns you've been running and see if there's any area of opportunity. Great, thank you very much, Demi. We'll see you next week or JC next week. Sounds good. Thanks guys, talk to you soon. All right.